Our first lesson this morning is from the seventh chapter of Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, of, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory, and wisdom and thanksgiving, and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here ends the reading. We'll read responsively Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The Lord Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Our second lesson this morning is from the third chapter of 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Here ends the reading. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. After he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will receive the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise. 
be seated the children's sermon at this time. I know you have a, a something you're making in the um, in children's church, so that'll be good. Okay, I lost my seat. Oh, that's beautiful. Guess I'll stand. Good to see you. Let us pray. Almighty God, May the words that are spoken be guided by the Holy Spirit and give us your strength and peace in Jesus' name, amen. So I'll stand over here so everyone gets a good view of you. Um, Today is All Saints Sunday, and a day we remember many things. One of them, as you heard in the prayer, those who have died since last All Saints and entered the church triumphant, and we remember them in the prayer and, and sound the chime and light the candle. And we are saints by the gift of holy baptism and at the same time sinners. That's one of the Lutheran, deep Lutheran thoughts that we are both saint and sinner, forgiven by God and still at times inclined to to do things that may not be God's will. So that's part of what we're celebrating. And today in that lesson we read the Beatitudes of Jesus. Beatitude means blessing. I know you're going to be working on a beatitude in children's church, and we found this little flower. I'm going to give you a flower. You can put it together. The beatitude. So bee, there's a honey bee pollinating a flower, a honey bee. So beatitudes. So when we, you just heard the beatitudes read, and, and they do sound like they are blessings to us. At the same time, as we receive these blessings, we give them to others. So the B, that's the idea, the B attitude. So have these attitudes. Poor in spirit means that we know our need for God and we know our need for each other. We want to be in community. Those who mourn, we've been sad. There are loved ones that have passed away, but there are many people we don't know who are perishing in the world and our mourning is for them also. So the, the idea of mourning is not just for those we know, but all people. Blessed are the meek. I think we think that meekness means weakness, and that's not true. Meekness is strength. And the best way I can understand or tell you to understand meekness is the willingness to step to the end of the line and let other people go first. So meek is strength, and Jesus calls us to be meek and to bless those who are meek. Hungering for righteousness means you want to have friends and maintain friendships, and I know you do. I know you have friends, I know you maintain friendships. That's what hunger for righteousness is. Being merciful is to not be quick to criticize someone or judge someone. Pure in heart means we see the best in each other. We're not looking for what's wrong, we're looking for what's best in each other making peace. I wanted to read that one twice today. If you noticed, I jumped ahead to peacemakers because, well, peacemaking is trying to keep our relationships truthful and at the same time respectful and at the same time truthful. Well, I did say that. Truth is important. But all of those ingredients uh, make for peace and as we listen and care for each other. Persecuted. I don't know if you've been persecuted or Um, We all have probably faced bullies in our lives. And when we face that, um, it's it's important to lean back into the arms of Jesus and to give thanks for family and friends and to make sure that if we are being or facing a bully, we we are able to to stand and, and to fall into the support that we have. That's not an easy thing to explain in a children's sermon, and we'll have other top opportunities to talk about that. So I'm going to give you each a a bee, uh, a bee but a flower. And um, it's very easy to put together, even I did it. And it's just a reminder of all these beatitudes that are so important, bee attitudes, attitudes that you and I, well first blessings you and I are receiving, and then attitudes, beatitudes that you and I can carry and give to each other and all people, okay? Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with each of you, amen. 
Thank you very much, and it'll be a great session in Children's Church, and we'll see you a little bit later. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words that are spoken and how we listen be guided by the Holy Spirit and true to the Holy Gospel, that we may indeed be people of the Beatitudes. In Jesus' name, amen. We give thanks for all the saints. We sang the beautiful hymn. We are thinking of sainthood in the fullest and most inclusive way possible. We give thanks for all the saints gathered here and those listening on the digital platform, for all the saints in our community and in the world, wherever they may be, whether they are worshiping or whatever they're doing in the community, nation, and whole world, those who share the breath of life with us now in this year of 2023, for the saints who from their labors rest. They surround us in the cloud of witnesses, and we prayed their names as we remember them. For the saints yet to be born, but who are already known, seen, embraced in the loving grace of the Holy Trinity. Based on our indigenous forebears, and certainly on the scripture, the Holy Scripture, Our family includes animals, plants, water, sky, soil, and rocks. We share a large and a diverse family, an all-inclusive family, called to be a life-giving family, not a life-diminishing or not a life-taking family. In Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 and 10, The heavenly family is described in a beautiful way. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne of the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne of the Lamb. In a time like ours, when many people distrust and fear people of other nations or sometimes even communities, tribes, and languages, we hear anew that the book of Revelation presents our family, a diverse, cosmopolitan, inclusive multitude of all cultures and languages and all people. It is this very multitude who Christ the Lamb laid down his life for and was raised from the dead in order to be their shepherd, our shepherd, the true shepherd of all the saints and of all people. Into our time of conflict in Israel and Gaza, in the Ukraine, in Myanmar, in Niger, and in so many places where injustice, unrest, and war ensues, Into this day come the Beatitudes of Christ. In our times of political division, discord, protests for justice and a better world for all people, where many want to return to what was simpler or more normal, to us today come the Beatitudes of Jesus. These Beatitudes are a reminder that the world as we have generally encountered it and called normal is not at all the world God intends or desires for all people. In many ways, God's desired world is the opposite of the world we expect, the world we feel comfortable with, the world we believe we are entitled to. Those who benefit from the privileges of skin color, economic wealth, power, possession, or where they were born, if we're listening, 
will find the Beatitudes very unsettling and a call to become renewed as disciples of Jesus Christ. Beatitude means a blessing or a promise of love and peace from God. But it's more than that. It is a blessing we receive from God, but we can also bring the blessings and the Beatitudes to other people as we live into and act out those Beatitudes. With these eight unexpected blessings, Jesus of Nazareth begins the Sermon on the Mount, through which he offers instruction and parable, promise and command to his followers about the ways God intends us to live and the world God calls us to work toward. Jesus describes God's word for our voices and God's work for our hands in the Beatitudes. Our Lord centers on those who suffer, those who remain faithful in hardships, those who focus on compassion and care for others, those who sacrifice for justice and righteousness, those who make peace to secure a better world for all. As I said in the children's sermon, but it's worth repeating, The word meek does not mean timid, submissive, or to be stepped on. In the biblical sense, it was used to describe someone who was totally focused on serving others and not at all, or let's say very comfortable, in stepping back and being last. That's the meek. And again, they are the strongest in our midst. It means sacrificial love. The people blessed in the Beatitudes are not the people our society tends to exalt. In our society, the rewards go to the victors, the glory to the powerful. We celebrate those who are dominant, aggressive, and many call winners. It's very good to do our best and try to win. But the real heart of it is participation and doing our best and giving the fullness of ourselves to the team that we are part of. Often we avoid the weak or we step over the poor or we push those who we prejudge as lacking or different to the side and reject calls for justice and peace. Because we don't want to rock the boat and we don't want to stir people up. And so these are the Beatitudes. We are called to be poor in spirit. Which means knowing our need for God's mercy and grace. Poor in spirit is a good thing. It's not a bad thing to know that we need God. Those who are poor in spirit are the ones who will be still to know that God is God, and that's in Psalm 46. The call is to seek God's will before our own will and to embody God's will ahead of our will. Isn't this the church about doing God's will? We are called to mourn, not only for the loved ones who we do mourn for families and friends and members of our congregation and community, but we are mourning for the world right now. We are mourning for victims of injustice and violence and hunger everywhere. We mourn for the innocent victims in Israel and Gaza, the Ukraine, Niger, Myanmar, and all places where life is taken from any of God's children. That's not God's will. So we are mourning, all of us, for, the, for all the people we share this garden with who are suffering. We are called in the Beatitudes to be meek, being last, so that we can care for, affirm, and lift up others. Another way to think of meekness is gentleness, being gentle with yourself, being gentle with this garden, 
being gentle with each other. What a change that would make if it was all about gentleness. We are called to hunger for right relationships with each other and all people. As disciples of Jesus, we are not wall builders. As disciples of Jesus, we do not hold grudges against each other. We work for right, just, and true relationships where the truth can be spoken, disagreements can occur, and unity can be maintained. That's no mystery. That's the way of Jesus Christ in this large, inclusive family of the children of God. First John chapter 3, 1 says it clear. If that's all you take, take that one verse. See what love the Father has given for us? That we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Remember that. When you see a stranger or someone that looks different or is having a problem or isn't doing what we think they should do. Wait a minute. A child of God. We are called to care mercifully, and that means to show respect for all and to be ready not to pounce on others in judgment. That pouncing technique, you pounce because you don't like something or pounce on each other, that's not gentle. That hurts, pushes people down. Being merciful means to care for all who are being hurt and terms of what they might need, their well-being, and their safety. And you and I are called to work to overcome that gap between those who have so much and those who have so little. We're called to be pure in heart. And that means, again, I said it in the children's sermon, because these are childlike, but so challenging to embody. Pure in heart means that we look first for the best in each other. We see the best in each other. We see the goodness in each other. And we don't look for things that we don't like. No, we look for the best. And we have no hurtful intentions toward others. I mean, there's none. No hurtful intentions toward others. It's the Beatitudes. It's Jesus speaking to us. We are to be peacemakers. We are called to be peacemakers. That means listening, respect, and love for others. It begins when we can see life from another's point of view. Empathy, that's that's feeling with and for other people. Feeling for the victims of the attack in Israel. Feeling for the victims in the attacks in Gaza, feeling for them. And they are us because we are all children of God. If they're in pain, we're in pain. And we are called to face persecution and criticism from others with deep and abiding faith and trust in God. Persecution is hostility and mistreatment of people based on ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, or political beliefs, and it's going on all around us every day, all the time. It's tiresome. It's ugly. And it's not who we are as the body of Christ the church. Mahatma Gandhi, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Dietrich Bonhoeffer, prophets like Jeremiah and Isaiah, and so many others have endured persecution and criticism. And when you and I are silent and stand back and witness persecution, well, then we're part of it. We're part of it then. If we don't stop it and stand up, we're part of it. And Jesus calls us to stand firm against persecution of anyone, anywhere. We have a big job. That's why you're called the body of Christ. We give thanks to God for all the saints. We are called to be people of the Beatitudes. Because it's not just about the blessings that God's giving us when we're sorrowful. It's about the blessings God has given us and we share with others. This is all about action out, not what we're getting. We give thanks to the creator who has placed us here 
and given us life. We're not here by chance. We are here in this unusual time for purpose, no matter what our age, here to be all the things the Beatitudes calls us to be. The Savior Jesus, who gave himself to die and be raised, that we would live beyond death, has set us free to be people of the Beatitudes. And the Holy Spirit, who stirs us to love and care for each other, our whole diverse, colorful, beautiful family, because we are all God's children now and forever. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Amen. Thank you.